Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at cumulative frequency diagrams so we can answer questions from exercise 3c. Okay, so what does it mean to draw a cumulative frequency diagram? Well, the word cumulative effectively refers to accumulating your frequency values as you go through your data set. So for the data values here that are heights measured in meters of these, uh, of these giraffes here, we're going to accumulate the frequency as we go through our frequencies, and then we'll draw that on the y-axis. The heights will be on the x-axis, and we'll see later as to why that might be a useful diagram to work with. So the first thing you need to do in drawing a cumulative frequency diagram is onto the side of your data uh, table to plot a cumulative frequency column. So it's going to be 4, and the way we're going to accumulate the frequency is we're going to accumulate the frequencies as we go through, just as the title says. So it's 4 add 7 is 11, then the next one's going to add on 15, and the next value is going to add on 33, and the next one's going to add on 17, and the next one's going to add on 4. <clears throat> so just do a little check that we've got 80 giraffes accounted for here. Now, how you would plot your cumulative frequency diagram? Well, your frequency and your cumulative frequency should always go on your y-axis here, and the heights, your data values, will go on the x-axis here. So always cumulative frequency on the y-axis. The next thing we need to plot is the zero marker. Now there are no elef there are no giraffes, sorry, that have a have a height less than 4.6. So there are no there are no giraffes with a height less than 4.6. So put a little marker at zero for the lowest frequency, for the lowest um, for the lowest height that you could possibly have. The next thing we need to do is plot using the ends of these intervals our cumulative frequency values. Now the reason for this is is that there are four there are four giraffes that have a height to less than 4.8. How many giraffes have a height less than 5? Well 11 giraffes have a height less than 5 based on these seven and these four. How many giraffes have a height less than 5.2? 26 giraffes have a height less than 5.2 based on this 15, 7 and 4. So it's how many giraffes have a height less than all of these key values on the right hand side of this interval here. So plot these as we go through and then the way we're going to connect these up is with a curved line that intersects through each of these points here. Okay, so it's not a line of best fit, it's not a jagged straight line, it's a curved line that goes through all of these coordinates um, exactly. Okay, so now that we've drawn this cumulative frequency diagram, um, we can use this to estimate the median and the quartiles. Now, the median marker is going to be the 40th elephant, so draw a little marker at your um, well, we'll do, we'll do the lower quartile first, that's going to be the 20th um, giraffe. Draw a line horizontally across, hit your line and work downwards, so we get a marker at 5.15. For the median, it's going to be the 40th giraffe that we're working with here, so draw a line horizontally across and then vertically down, so we get a median value of 5.3. And for Q3, the upper quartile, we draw a line horizontally across and vertically down, and we get a marker at 5.4. So we can also extend this down to a box plot diagram, which I'll show you in a second. C is use this to estimate the 90th percentile. Well, first we'd have to work out 90% of 80 and that would give us uh, the 72nd giraffe, so draw a line horizontally across from the 72nd elephant, so giraffe, and down, so we get 5.55. Uh, so the next thing, and the most interesting thing to do, is to be able to draw a box plot with this, with this information here, so 5.15 is the lower quartile, 5.3 is the um, 
median, 5.4 is the upper quartile, our minimum value is 4.6, and our maximum value is 5.8. So putting all of those markers in, and we've got ourselves a box plot diagram, nice and easy. Okay, so that's all we need to do for cumulative frequency diagrams. You'd be expected to answer a few questions from there as well, but that's roughly what you need to be doing there. Right, pause the video and have a go at this question here. Right, well done with this question then, so let's crack on with drawing the cumulative frequency diagrams. Make sure that when you do this, obviously, make sure you use a pencil and a uh, ruler, straight line. Um, so what we'll need here is the cumulative frequency going up the side, so it's definitely going to go up to 120, because in the question it's told me that I have 120 of these pine cones, and my weights are going to go from 1 to 2.2, so I think here what I'll have to do is go up in 0.4s, so 1.8, 2.2, unfortunately I can't fit 1.2 gaps onto my diagram here. Um, right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is add up my cumulative frequencies, or add up my frequencies as I go along. So it's going to be 7, 25, 59, 100, 115, 120, which is spot on what I need uh, out of my pine cones. So the first thing I'm going to do is I know that I've got no pine cones less than one kilogram. So I'll put a little marker at one kilogram zero. The next thing I'm going to do is put a marker at 1.27. So a little marker there. Try and be as accurate as you can with these. Next one is 1.425. Next one is 1.659. Next one is 1.8100. Next one is 2.0115. And the next one is 2.2120. And remember with cumulative frequency diagrams, it's a curved line that goes through all of these points exactly. Estimate the median mass. Well, what we'll do here is if we have 120, we'll go across and down. So I would say we probably have a median mass of about 1.65-ish uh, kilograms. Find the interquartile range and the 10th to 90th interpercentile range. So for the interquartile range, I need a marker at 30, which is going to be approximately 1.42. So it's going to be something subtract 1.42. And for the upper quartile, that's going to be at 90 pine cones. and be as accurate as you can, 1.78, I reckon. So what's 1.78 subtract 1.42? That's going to be 0 0.36. So the interquartile range is 0 0.36 kilograms. The 10th to 90th interpercentile range, so the 10th percent is going to be 12. So draw a marker here. So that's going to be about 1.24. So it's going to be something subtract 1.24. And the 90th interpercentile point is going to be at 108. So put a marker down from 108. And we're going to get about 1.8, no, 1 1.9, 1.92, I reckon, 1.92. Okay, so 1.92 subtracts 1.24, 1.92 subtracts, just be really careful, make sure you do these on your calculator, if in doubt, 0.68. Okay, so that's the interpercentile range. Draw a box plot um, for this data here, so we're going to have a marker at 1.0 as our lower bound, a marker at 2.2 for our higher bound, and then what we can do is we can extend these points downwards on the upper quartile, lower quartile, and median points. 
to form our box plot diagram. Just like that, there we are. It looks a bit sketchy, but there we are. That's the um, that's the box plot. Right, thanks very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's all been roughly familiar to you from GCSE and answer some questions from XS3C if you feel you need to. Thanks very much for watching.